G'day, welcome to Redriven. Now, every family has that, you know, that one smart ass sporty kid and the uncle and auntie that love to go camping, but every family also has that that boring cousin, like that just exists and never says or does anything of any real interest. For Mitsubishi, the smart ass sporty kid is obviously the various Mitsubishi Lancer evolutions, the camping loving uncle and auntie of the Pajero and the Triton, and this, the normal Lancer, is arguably that boring cousin. Or is that just being way too harsh? Are these things actually interesting? Are they kind of genuinely pretty good? Because they are bloody everywhere on Australian roads, so surely they must be pretty decent. So now that some of these are over a decade old and have thousands of kilometers on them, what actually goes wrong with them? What do they like to live with on a daily basis? What do they cost to own and operate? But most importantly, should you buy one? Let's find out. Now, before we get deep into this video, I should mention that in this video, we're gonna be focusing on the Australian variants of the 2007 to 2017 CJ Lancer, and not the Rally Arts and not the Evolution models, just the normal Lancers. But if you're not watching this from Australia, and you want information on normal Lancers, don't panic because everything that we're gonna be going over should relate to Lancers in your local market. Now, speaking of the Rally Art and the Evolution 10 models, if you have one of those cars and you're located in like Sydney or Newcastle or somewhere in between and you're happy to lend it to us for a day so we can film it for a redriven review, can you let us know in the comments? Because we would bloody love to do that. Also, to keep this video as objective as we possibly could, we've reached out to multiple Lancer owners groups, Mitsubishi owners groups, we've spoken to Mitsubishi technicians, we've trawled through surveys and reports and forums online. So this video is the culmination of all of that information. Now, as I mentioned at the start, this generation of Lancer was in production for 10 years. Now, in this genre of car, that is a bloody long time. To put that in, into perspective, most of this car's competition will see a whole new platform or major revisions every five years. So, in an attempt to keep your attention on the Lancer, Mitsubishi put this thing through a bunch of different updates and it was available in a vast range of different models and special editions and stuff like that. But you know what? Instead of me just nattering on about the Lancer, how about we cut to a B-roll montage while I provide a voiceover because that'll be far more entertaining. The Lancer was initially available as a sedan with a sportback joining later in 2008. And like the choice of two body styles, depending on the trim spec for the more consumer centric everyday Lancers, two engines were available, a frugal two litre unit or a more powerful and torquier 2.4 litre. Both will be mated to either a five speed manual or a CVT for those requiring only two pedals. From 2007 to 2013, the Lancer lineup chopped and changed with trim levels seemingly appearing and vanishing year on year, initially kicking off with the entry level ES to the mid range VR and the sporty VRX, and Aspire and Olympic Special also joined, as did the RX, VR Platinum, SX, and Active. But then Mitsubishi discontinued the SX and later the VR and Aspire. However, a Platinum 30th anniversary LX and Sport turned up. From 2014, the range simplified with the models consisting of just the ES Sport, LX and VRX for sedans and GSR hatchbacks. But to confuse this new simplicity, the LX variant was discontinued, an LS variant was introduced, and the VRX was replaced by the XLS. But this is just for the normal Lancers, because on top of all this, you then have the Rally Art and Evolution models. While the models mentioned previously are all exclusively front-wheel drive, the turbocharged rally-inspired all-wheel drive rally art and evolution models exist for those wanting a far more exciting driving experience, but they deserve their own episodes, and we'll be producing these in the near future. But back to the normal Lancers, look, obviously we love to go over every specific detail of what every variant gets and what every update received, but it'd take hours, it would get so boring. So instead of doing that, we have grabbed all of that information and we've jammed it in our incredibly handy and totally free redriven cheat sheets. Our cheat sheets are invaluable as they provide a full breakdown of the car's model range, its common problems, what you need to look out for before handing over your hard earned cash, how much of that cash you should be handing over and so much more. Check it out at redriven.com or in the link below. Now guys, if you already own one of these Lancers, or you're some sort of a Lancer expert, which would be a little bit strange, and you've noticed that in this video we've miss missed something huge, can you please let us know in the comments? We're gonna do our best to cover as much as we can, but yeah, if we miss something massive, let us know in the comments. Okay, so how's the exterior? Well, I'm just gonna come out and say this. I feel like Mitsubishi have lied to us, especially in terms of the sport back. Now look, what I mean, and I know that the production versions of concept cars very rarely look the same, obviously, except the Lexus LC, because here's what the concept car looks like, and here's what the production car looks like. They look almost identical. 
But have a look at this. This is the Mitsubishi Sportback, the production one that we've all seen on the road. But here's what the concept looks like. How good does that thing look? Why doesn't, why doesn't the real version look like that? Anyway, look, the Lancer, it's certainly not an ugly car by any means, and especially this one actually looks quite good with the VRX wheels and the aftermarket or updated headlights and tail lights. But in this category of car, I just feel like its competition are more obviously stylish. Like this for me just exudes value for money more than any kind of prestige or luxury. Actually, while we're on the VRX wheels, I should mention that the Lancer can look pretty dramatically different depending on which trim level you get because some of them come with obviously the better wheels and a body kit. But I should mention that if the Lancer you're looking at has a wing that looks like this, that's a good sign that the owner is a dickhead or drives like a dickhead. Now we will be covering like common issues and faults with the exterior and mechanically later in the video. But if you are in the market for one, there are some things you need to watch out for. Now, as these lenses become more and more affordable, they are getting very, very popular with P-platers and young drivers. And therefore, they can be a bit susceptible to accident damage, mainly because P-platers and young drivers are generally shit drivers. It's not their fault. We're all bad at things we're new at. Also, because a lot of young drivers are on a tight budget or they're gonna try and hide any accident damage from their parents, it's really important to go over the whole car and look for any sketchy repair work. Okay, so how's the interior? Well look, over the course of this thing, the 10 years that it existed, the overall design didn't change a whole lot, but the materials did depending on year and spec. But even in saying that, even the later model top spec ones, you know, they were never overly luxurious as such. But design wise, I really like these. I feel like it's, the only analogy I can think of is it's like a really well designed fridge from like 10 years ago. Like all the materials used in here, heaps of hard scratchy plastics all over the place. This painted plastic is interesting, but design wise, it's just simple. And I, I personally feel like it's aging design wise really well. But as far as wear and tear, interesting a lot of this silver plastic is kind of not as silver anymore like it's almost wearing back to the black plastic underneath it um some of the hard plastics they are hard but they are scratching up a little bit the seats the actual upholstery is wearing really nicely on the steering wheel it's plastic so it's wearing quite well um, on the leather models but the leather can age if it's not cared for the leather can age pretty badly as far as the other wear and tear goes, look, there's not many buttons or switches in here, but everything still feels like solid. Look, everything feels good to use. And as far as ergonomics go, look, these seats aren't that supportive. Again, this is the base model. When you go into higher specs and later trims, the, the seats do get a lot better, but we have read a lot of reports that these seats can be very uncomfortable on long trips. Okay, in the back seat, I'm exactly 14 centimeters taller than Mitsubishi brand ambassador and martial arts legend, Jackie Chan. This is in my driving position, and I gotta say, it's bloody comfy back here. Heaps of foot room, heaps of knee room. Even the seating position is kind of like cozy. I could have a, like a nap back here. Super comfortable, lovely. As far as wear and tear goes, honestly, what wear and tear? I don't know if these rear seats have ever been used because if they have, you could never tell. Feels like a new car. Okay, so how's the tech? Well, look, Mitsubishi's in general offer a whole lot of tech and features for the money. And the fact that this thing has been around as long as it has, and it was available in like a thousand different variants, the levels of tech are gonna vary enormously depending on which model you're actually looking at. But for more of an overview of what tech you can expect, here's me doing another voiceover. Let's start with the early examples of the base spec ES. The bare minimum that you can expect will include a four speaker stereo with CD player and MP3 compatibility, air conditioning, cruise control with steering wheel controls, remote central locking, power mirrors and windows, 12 volt power outlets, a trip computer and an immobilizer. Whereas more recent and top spec models will include a six speaker sound system, leather seat facings, front sport seats with heating, front fog lights, proximity key, a 6.1 inch color touchscreen with a rear view camera and Bluetooth connectivity, automatic headlights and rain sensing wipers. But for the specific details of which Lancer gets what levels of tech, just jump on redriven.com and check out that cheat sheet or click on the link in the description below down there somewhere. Okay, so is it practical? Well, considering the size of the car, yeah. Good size boot, plus these seats can fold forward. Should also mention, obviously, the sport back with its lift back rear end is even more practical than this one. Practicality in the second row, you've got an armrest with a couple of cup holders here. You've got one redriven Mitsubishi Lancer script holder just here. And both doors have some really, really small door pockets. And practicality up front, you've got a pretty good size glove box there. You've got a spot perfectly sized for your phone just here. I think that's an ashtray. Disgusting. 
Uh, there's a spot here to keep some dice, which is, I suppose, quite fitting being a Lancer. You roll your dice, see what you get. Uh, there's two cup holders just here, and there's a spot here for a collection of Ray-Bans. Yeah, there's a lot of Ray-Bans in there. Oh, also, there's door pockets that will fit a redriven water bottle perfectly. Okay, so what goes wrong with these things? We're gonna to get to all the mechanical stuff in a little bit, but we're gonna start with the exterior, and this car is a perfect example of what can go wrong. This also happened to Sam's car. Sam's the guy that's behind the camera right now. He used to have one of these, same thing happened. The clear coat and the paint can go all dodgy and sketchy over the entire car. Now, there are some reports that on 2011 models specifically, the tail lights can short circuit and even catch a light. So if you've got a 2011 model and someone walks past the back of your car and says, man, those tail lights look fire, maybe they mean literally. Now, in terms of lenses that have keyless entry, there are loads of reports that the keyless entry, the actual key, if it's like in your pocket or a purse or even on a table next to a mobile phone or cop some electrical interference, it can wipe the data off the key, meaning you can't get in or start the car. What a pain in the ass that is. The good news is there is a revised key available. Okay, problems inside. There are a lot of reports that the air conditioning can just stop blowing cold air or just stop blowing any kind of air at all. It can be the fan motor, it can be condensing units, it can be a whole bunch of different things. Generally speaking, but if it's an air conditioning problem, it can be a nightmare and nightmares can get expensive. As I mentioned, the leather seats can have some issues as well. Not only can the leather kind of get gross and all scratchy and hard and yuck, but the actual foam in the seat, it can go pretty wrong as well, like getting overly squishy and almost collapsing. Um, you can get them reupholstered, but it seems to be that the cheaper option to fix them is just get some other seats out of a crashed one. Now, if you are looking at one of the lower models and the tech in it absolutely sucks, you can do what this owner has done and fit an aftermarket unit. That way you can have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, reversing camera, all the phone connectivity you want. That, pretty easy to do. Now guys, before we get into mechanically what can go wrong with the Lancer, I've got to ask a favor. If you're enjoying this video, can you please hit those like, subscribe and bell buttons and also share Redriven as much as you can. The more you hit those buttons and the more you share our content, the more of this content we can make for you. Okay, mechanically, what goes wrong with the Lancer? I'd love to tell you, but I can't because I'm not a qualified mechanic. The gym is. The 4B11 and the 4B12 engines with a modernized replacement for the tried and tested 4G63. It's a lighter engine and more powerful. And properly maintained units are fairly reliable. The MIVEC, which stands for Mitsubishi Innovative Valve Electronic Control, uh, occasionally have solenoid issues with that, um, but not very often. Some of the earlier models, the pre-2012-ish uh, engines, had a few issues with their timing chain and tensioners, um, but the kits can be bought for about $350 here in Australia, and there's a few hours work in it. So with oil and filter, you're Average mechanic can usually do that for well under $1,000. A very common problem with these is the ABS module or the ABS pump. Here in Australia, a replacement unit for those from Mitsubishi is about $2,800, if you can get one, because they seem to be on indefinite back order. You can have them repaired, and it typically costs about half that. Or you could try a second-hand option. The problem with that is you have to match the part numbers exactly uh, otherwise it won't work properly. And that can be hard, but because it's a common problem in the cars, they can be hard to find. The Jatco CVT transmission in these, they do have a fairly bad reputation for reliability. But when serviced properly, statistically, the amount of failures they have compared to the number of transmissions out there suggests otherwise. The recommended service interval for these CVT transmissions is every 90,000 Ks under normal conditions. And under adverse conditions, it's every 40,000 Ks. But what a lot of people don't realise that Stop start city traffic is adverse conditions for these. So if you want them to last, you need to service them every 45,000 Ks. Also, we need to mention these Lancers have received a stack of different factory recalls. Some of them are kind of minor. Other ones are like genuine safety concerns and can be terrifying. So if you are in the market for one of these, please, please make sure that any Lancer you've looked at have had all of the factory recalls seen too. Is it safe? Well, according to the Australian Safety Cool Cats and Cap, it kind of depends. If the lens you're looking at has the side curtain airbags fitted, five stars. If not, four stars. But to give you an overview of what safety equipment that you can expect in the Lancer, I'm going to do another voiceover explaining, but this time I'm going to do it like uh, a train station announcer at a New South Wales train station. <laughs> For all of the specific details of which Lancer gets what safety tech, just jump on redriven.com and check out that cheat sheet. 
So what's it like to drive? Well, you know what, from the very beginning, these things were always just like a user-friendly small car. And even after all of these years, yeah, still does everything pretty well. Even after all these years, like it still feels sure-footed and it's, you know, comfortable enough. The steering's quite light and the turning circle's really, really tight, so it's super easy to maneuver around town. Now, if you do feel like stepping up to one of the sporty models with the more powerful engine, Basically everything gets better. Like the sporty suspension still feels really, really compliant and is uh, comfortable enough for every day as long as it hasn't been modified badly. In saying that, the suspension in this one has got, I don't know how to put this, like a, a little bit doughy and almost a little bit creaky as well. They all kind of have a habit, habit of doing that. As far as the other sounds go, in here it's pretty good. Like it's not too rattly, it's not too squeaky. There are you know, the occasional noises here and there. On these wheels and tires, there is a bit of road noise and it can get a little bit annoying. And the cabin, because it's all very hard, scratchy plastics, it can get a bit echoey, but like, I'm, I'm being you know, super picky. Actually, even following on from that, the CVT transmission in this one, it just does that typical like CVT drone thing, which you do get used to. I wish it was a more of a traditional torque converter automatic, but again, being like kind of car journal wanker, picky on that. Now, as far as the two engines go, the 2.4 litre with, you know, basically, yes, it has more power, but it has more importantly, more torque. And it is a nicer unit to drive around town. And if you want to kind of get a bit enthousi enthusiastic out on a country road, there's nothing wrong with this two litre as such, but there are times where it just feels a bit, a bit lackluster. Look, obviously, you know, something like a rally art or any of the evolution models, it's going to feel completely different to drive those because they're completely different beasts to this thing. But overall for this particular Lancer, Look, it does everything a base model Lancer should do. It is a bit boring, but it works. Pricing here in Australia kicks off from as little as $3,000, but that Lancer is going to be a piece of shit. At the other end of the spectrum, and obviously excluding the Rallyart and Evo models, you're going to be looking in the low $20,000 range. Rallyarts are asking currently anywhere from 10 to 40 grand, and Evo is anywhere from 30 to 85 thousand dollars. So that basically means in the Lancer range, the difference between the cheapest ones and the most expensive is a mere $82,000. And for pricing internationally, here's a graphic. Mitsubishi claims a fuel consumption figure of anywhere from 7.7 .7 to 10.2 litres per 100 k's, depending on about a thousand different variables. This particular car was claimed at 8.3 litres per 100 k's, and it is seeing 8.3 litres per 100 k's. Awesome. Mitsubishi offered a five year 100,000 or 130,000 kilometre warranty, depending on the year of the Lancer, which actually doesn't even matter anymore because all of these, even the most recent ones, are now running out of warranty. Servicing is recommended at every 12 months or 15,000 k's, and if you are in the market, for one of these things, make sure that it has been serviced on time and keep servicing it on time as if you don't service it on time, it might go boom. Okay, so should you buy one? Well, look, with so many different models and variants available over that 10 year lifespan, it really does come down to the specific example that you're looking at. We'd obviously avoid any Lancers with a sketchy history or huge kilometres, as with so many examples populating the used car market, a perfectly serviced and low kilometre example will be just around the corner, and it will be worth every cent of the few extra dollars that it will be asking. There really is a Lancer to suit everyone's budget and requirements, and look, obviously excluding the rally art and the evolution models, it is a bit of a boring kind of no-nonsense car. And yeah, you should probably buy a Toyota Corolla or a Mazda 3 or even a Hyundai i30 instead. But finding a good one of these, yeah, it's a tentative yes from us. Bus, before you hand over your cash, get it to a qualified mechanic and have a full pre-purchase inspection carried out. As the build quality between examples, it can vary, let alone what any previous owners may have subjected it to. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And would you buy one of these things or would you buy one of the competition? Let us know in the comments. I'll oh, remember as well, can you please hit those like, subscribe and bell buttons if you enjoyed the video and share Redriven as much as you possibly could. That'd be bloody awesome. See you next time. Also, to keep the video as objective as we possibly could, we do this every single week. And it's just completely me up the normal system. <laughs> Obviously, we'd love to go over, blah, 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 blah. Okay. But if you are in the market for one, there are a few things that you need to watch out for. Me. Guys, thank you so much for watching. What did you do? Subscribe and bell buttons and share Redriven as much as you can. That would be bloody awesome. F***ing f***ed it at the end. Here we go.